Joining me on the program is, uh, well, a member of the team at uh, Laidlaw College, uh, Terry Poono. Terry, kia ora. Good morning. Thanks so much for your time today. Hello, Andrew. Thank you for the opportunity. Can I just say, now, uh, people listening to this on Radio won't appreciate it, but an absolutely stunning backdrop. Uh, we're having this conversation by Zoom today. Uh, you've got, um, you're, you're in the new Laidlaw campus in Henderson. Uh, I mean, hey, I'm studying there part-time as well. What a blessing that place is. What a, what a beautiful place to be studying God's Word, isn't it? Uh, it definitely is. We officially opened at the start of this year, and I'm on the second floor. Really awesome background, but uh, look, this is the uh, the, the fruits of, of the vision and the, the prayers of the community and the church and people who um, have a love for God, um, and we're really grateful um, to be in this place. Wonderful, wonderful place, wonderful atmosphere. And hey, at the end of the day, it's a building, it's a facility, uh, but God is doing good things in that space as well. Now, one of your um, specialist areas of study is uh, Pacifica theology, and I, I suppose looking at that as something which is a different, a different way of looking at God and having an understanding of faith than perhaps a, a Palangi perspective would have. And I suppose looking at faith from a community point of view rather than an individual point of view, is that one of the points of difference, Terry? Definitely, a specific theology is very unique. And just as you stated, uh, the collectivism, um, the support or the collective identity and, and community is supported or in favour over the individualistic um, understanding of, of, of Christian, the Christian faith. And um, it's something that I really cherish as a Pacific Islander. Mm -hmm. um, and context and lived experience is really important. Uh, we're very, let's just say, um, philosophy, we're not very strong in the philosophy, but our Christian faith is very much lived out yeah. through, through our cultural practices through um, community, through our love for one another. Yeah. Um, and so I really love it. I really love uh, being a Pacific Islander. And, and hey, one of the one of the, the cool things about that, and certainly I, something that other cultures could, could lean into and learn from, is the way in which for Pacifica people, the, the focus is on looking after each other and making sure that it's not just uh, a competitive society where, uh, you know, one person's trying to get as much as they can but just making sure that everybody in a community is cared for, is looked after, is provided for, where the last become first. Some very biblical uh, models, really, there when it comes to caring for others in community. Yeah, definitely. Even before the missionaries came to the Pacific Islands, we believe that uh, some of our cultural traditions, um, and the love for community, love for one another, looking at our community responsibility, it's a gift from God. So when the Christian missionaries arrived into the Pacific Islanders, uh, the Pacific Islands, um, they noticed that um, it, it was a blessing mm. um, being part of this community. And so they didn't change it. Um, they said, hey, um, so I, as a theologian, would see um, the Christian faith as enhancing and reaffirming um, a lot of our cultural practices. And one mm. example they like to mention um, over Easter, um, I'm part of the Onehala Co-op Church in uh, Onehala, and uh, we on Easter Saturday had a, it's it's new, I'm new to the church, but a cultural tradition where uh, fishermen, people from the church would go out and fish. Yeah. They'll come back with the fish, um, and they would have a feast, and they'll also distribute the fish to the to the people of the church. Okay. And uh, our church minister, Ben Tokelau, and um, so I understand it's called the Inati, so it's a cultural tradition in, in Tokelau. Tokelau would be in the islands. And, and so what they would do is um, they would go out and fish. They will come in and, and collect, gather all the fish, what they call a malai. Mm. Um, and then they offer this as a um, as a, uh, a form of praise, praise of thanksgiving to God. Wow. Thanking God for his abundance and his provision for the people. And once they've done the, 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 the praise of thanksgiving, the offering to God, they would actually distribute this to the people, mm. um, to the vulnerable people. So as you mentioned, it, there's an equal distribution. There, it's about caring for the vulnerable, and it's also actually utilising 
your gifts, if you're a fisherman, utilizing that gift and giving that back to the people um, of your village or the island. So we actually, um, actually I didn't think about it until after I received, I didn't turn up on Saturday, but on the Sunday when I came to church, I got a tap on my shoulder from the minister. I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I was in trouble for this. We're not coming on Saturday, but he, he should come to my office. But I like the principal telling off the students. So yeah, I yeah. went to his office. And he grabbed a bag and he just passed it over to me, shook my hand and said, that's our blessing for you. Wow. And I just realized afterwards, wow, this is the nutty put into practice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that wonderful Easter message put into concrete practice. Now, is this something which happens specifically around the Easter season within as a cultural practice? Or is, or is this, uh, I suppose, an ongoing uh, sharing of resources within community? Terry? Um, for this church specifically, um, the, the fishing is unique to this church. I've been raised in the Samoan church, but we have um, given and, and they're loving for one another, um, done in different ways. Yep. Um, through Tornai, through the coming of uh, people coming together to celebrate Easter and then having a feast afterwards, mm -hmm. where everyone will come with and, and, and contribute to the to the feast. And, you know, Pacific Islanders, we, we love our food. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's plenty of food to share around, um, and so there we we carry out our our um, love for one another and love for community in different ways. Mm. And of course, the gospel story fits very much very well into that culture. Uh, Jesus hanging out with a bunch of people who also very much uh, loved to fish and loved to feast. And there's that beautiful story uh, after the resurrection where uh, Jesus cooks a, a feed of, of fish that he helped uh, the, the disciples catch, and they just, just have a barbecue on the beach together and enjoy fellowship and get restored back into relationship. I mean, that's, that's a beautiful picture that would be, well, at home in many Pacific Island communities. It really is. And I think that was one of the reasons why um, Christianity was easily integrated into civic communities because it's those kind of stories that we can resonate with. Yeah. And really, it's about being authentic. Um, contextual theology or Pacific theology is about um, seeking an authentic expression um, from our cultural context. Mm. And those are the type of narratives that we can really resonate with and say, hey, this is um, uh, God's, oh, this is the kingdom of God yeah. manifested through. Um, within the ministry of Jesus and the kingdom of God that can be realized through our life, lived experiences as and, Pacific Island people. And, and wonderful that that can be uh, integrated within the community and also within migrant communities uh, from uh, from Tokelau, as you say, to uh, to Onihanga uh, and uh, fish caught off off the Mangari Bridge, perhaps by uh, by groups of guys and shared in amongst the uh, the congregation. Wonderful way of integrating those stories, that, that gospel message into into culture and into lived experience. Terry, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, how many fish did you get? Is it is it rude for me to ask? Did you get uh, two two massive fish? <laughs> um and my family are not really uh um seafood people. Yeah, we yeah, love yeah. our meats. Yeah. Um so we gave we gave it to um uh, some uh, relatives, um especially the elders yeah. from our family who are not well. Yeah. Um, so we were blessed by others and want to pass on that blessing to others, especially um, being elders. We we do that uh, in the Pacific cultures. We look after the vulnerable people. Yeah. Um, and so we were grateful for the, from the uh, for the love of the church, and we thought, hey, this we want to pass on the blessing to others. Now, and a wonderful but, principle again, yeah. honouring the elders and and passing on a blessing. Terry, thank you so much for the blessing that you are to us. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you. Thank you once again, Andrew, for the opportunity. Hey, thanks very much for joining us in the Rima studio. Thanks very much for watching the interview. It's kind of nice to have an audience, actually. And if you did like what you watched, then do give us a like, do give us the thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more interviews like that one, or perhaps even better, subscribe and those interviews will come straight to you. Don't forget to turn on your notifications and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.